be very very much familiar after this video you'll be very very much familiar with factors divisors and all of these and how to efficiently compute them let's see um the factor the kth factor of n we have to find out which means we are given two positive integers n and k now a factor of an integer n is defined as an integer i where n mod i is zero we will see by more examples but it's just that a factor is any integer a factor of a number n is any integer which if i do of that integer mod okay n mod that integer then it should give me a zero now we have to consider a list of all the factors of n sorted in the ascending order which means if i have all the factors of n if i saw that in the ascending order then i have to return the kth factor in the list or basically if, if my k is absurd then i have to return a minus one if it is not even there now let's see with example itself if i have n is 12 now i can just plot or basically write down all the factors of 12 12 i have okay one two three four six and twelve as you can see twelve mod one is zero twelve mod two is zero twelve mod three is zero twelve mod four is zero twelve mod six is zero and twelve mod with that number is also zero mod is mean okay twelve mod six mod is just but okay just to say reminder remainder not reminder remainder is actually a zero now you can just easily go through and build okay like let's say if i try for five 12 mod 5 is a 2 it is not a 0 that is the reason it is not a factor of 12 5 is, 5 is not, not a factor of 12 let's say for the example of 7 you will see that uh, um, simply 1 and 7 are the only factors for 4 1 2 and 4 are the only factors now if we go back and look at the pattern you will see okay 1 1 into 12 is actually a 12 2 into 6 is actually a 12 3 into 4 is actually a 12 ah that's something great and i can also easily see that okay that is one pattern which i could see and i can also see okay that at max i could go up till the n by 2 now r in why is that case because you will see okay i'll try on to know okay if some number is a factor i am saying that it can be at max up till n by 2 but Aryan, are you drunk or what? Like you are saying n by 2. n by 2 for 12 is 6. Okay, we can see all the factors up to 12. But yeah, are you blind? You can also see 12 as a factor, which is more than, for sure, more than n by 2. So my right now, n by 2 is 6. Right, n by 2 is right now 6. Now I am saying my all the factors will be less than or equal to n by 2. Yeah, exception is, okay, number itself. Number itself will also be a factor. Now, how surely I can see that? Because as soon as I will increase my number more than n by 2, let's say I increase that more than n by 2. Now, to actually be a factor, and for sure, that number is not n, which means it is less than n and more than n by 2. Less than n and more than n. That's reason I, I just took a third number, let's say number 7 now you have which when i say if it's a factor which means after multiplying that number with some number let's say 6 is a factor of 12 so i multiply that 6 with the 2 then i get a number 12 i multiply the number 12 with a 1 i get a number 12 i multiply the number 4 with a number 3 i get a 12 so basically when we have any factor we multiply it with the number and we get the number itself that's the reason we say it's a factor so for a number 7 which is in between 6 and 12 as i was saying it is, it is between n by 2 and n and we want to check if that is actually a factor or not. That can be a factor or not. It will for sure not be. Because what will you multiply it with? <laughs> a one point something? No, right? You can only, only multiply with the absolute number, like integer. So, and this is, okay, 2 and 1 are already covered. So, for n by 2, higher will than n by 2, I will not, okay, into 2 is the smallest number I should multiply. And as soon as I do a into 2, it will actually start exceeding n itself. So, one thing we have to, we have got to know, sure, we have got to know so far is that the maximum factor can, of a number, it can be up till n by 2 only. And, yeah, one factor can, one factor will the number be itself also. Okay, as you can see, n by 2 is a 3. So, I'll try for all the factors up till the number 3. Here also, I'll try all the, for all the factors up till the number 2. And for sure, you can see the number itself is a, it's a factor itself. If you want to code that up, it's pretty gonna simple. It's going to be pretty simple that I'll go on to all the divisors or basically all the factors starting from 1. I'll keep on increasing and I'll try for up till the n by 2. For example, for number 12, I'll try for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. That's it. I'll try up till the n by 2 only. And then I'll check, okay, if that number, if that number 3, let's say I'll try for this number DS1, DS2, DS3, DS4, DS5, DS6. I'll try for all these numbers. If that number divides my number n, that can be a factor. And I'll just keep on reducing my k. Because ultimately, if you remember, I want the kth, kth number, kth factor. And I'll ultimately return d if my k becomes 0. 
but if you remember up up till n by 2 okay that is okay we will have some factors but we still would be having one more factor so if my k is still remaining then i can say okay if my k is exactly one which means i just want one more factor because you are seeing now i'm reducing my k again and again so now i'm just okay applying okay k k k k, k. if my k becomes zero which means the k factor which i needed i have got that and simply return that if not okay if only one k is remaining for sure that will be the last n last n which i wanted which i can also be factors so i can simply return the n else return a minus one in any of the other cases so the code is pretty simple as simple as what we saw that we'll go on to all the factors from one up to n by two i'll check if that actually divides my number n which with me with n mod d equal to zero and then i can keep on reducing that k count because i want the kth factor but ultimately we saw that okay we can also have the last number like number n itself as a factor so if i have one my k remaining as one then i can simply return n again that's a remaining k because you know i'm reducing my k again and again so i can simply say one else i can simply say minus one now with this you can easily see that okay you're going up to n by two so that's a o of n by two operation time comes easily like o of n by two and o of n more or less are same so time is o of n space is nothing o of one but the problem says can you do it in less than o of n complexity then for that when in the very beginning we saw a pattern right we saw a pattern okay one pairs with 12 two pairs with six three pairs with four so like can't we just go on to this specific left half can't we go on to this yeah we can right so for that what will happen is okay what what is this number what is this specific range this is nothing but root n this is nothing but root n so what i will do is i will go up till the root n only and okay now i'll go up to the only root n so now i don't have to go up to the n by 2 i'll go up till only the root n but r in okay your k if your k factor is up till root n that's okay but what if it is in the right part then okay i also know again that this right part will also be at max root n which means see this left part is continuous root n but you will see the remaining part is n minus root n but i will not go on to this n minus root n part now nah. And neither I'll go on to n by two minus root n part because still it will be equal to n by two. I'll not on I'll not go on to its right part. I'll firstly go on the left part and then from the left part itself I'll come back. And I'll say okay if from the left part I'm coming back I will not say okay and now I will not I'll not take left I'll take from left corresponding right value from left corresponding right value and that's how I will just go left root n times and left and sorry and again back root n times and that is how i can actually achieve it in o of 2 into root n now for a quick example like how we actually can do it so if we are at this location let's see if we are at this location if i just simply erase it quickly now if i am at this specific location i know i'll just simply go on root n times and then when i am done i'll simply come back root n and when i say, when i'm coming back then for this corresponding d, I will have to check for n by d. So as to not go into this n by 2 minus root n range in the right. So the code will look simple as simple as that. Okay. You will firstly go in the starting from left, like from d equal to 1 up to d equal to root n. Let's change the color. Let's keep it purple. So we will have from d equal to 1 up to d equal to root n. You will go only root, only root n numbers you will actually see. And for sure, it, it will be same if n mod. Uh, d will actually be a zero you will just simply reduce and you will simply return the d itself but this is only you have gone this is only you have gone up till the root n what about the remaining part what if your k is in the right part yeah cool no worries now i will not go on the right but i'll go on the left corresponding to left i will view the right one so now if you just see let's say if take a, a normal example for this equation itself 12 my d will be actually 1, 2, 3. Now 3 is the root n. Root n value is 3 at max. So at last my d will increase. How the loop works is, okay, d, d, lastly my d will increase. It will go and check. d will be 4. 4 is not less than or equal to 3. So it will break out of this loop. So in the last I will see, okay, my d has become 4. So for the next loop, which means for coming backwards in the left part, I will be doing a d equal to, like new d is equals to nothing but my d minus 1. Because D has become 4 and I wanted to again start off from the 3 itself and I'll keep on going back. So D equal to like my D will actually re reduce by 1 because it, it has been increased because of the above for, above for loop. And then I'll simply go, go back up till the 1 itself, which I was doing here itself. I was increasing 
linearly up till the root n now i will decrease linearly up till the one and again that is nothing but this is nothing but a root n value this is nothing but a root n value now um i will simply go back and uh, i will simply have a quick check same check that if n mod d equal to 0 then minus minus k and return the n by d again here i am returning n by d and not a d because here it was a d d d but as i am coming back for this specific d i want to return a n by d and not a d so i'll simply return a n by d now my quick question is is this correct have pause the video and tell me is this correct i'll tell you no it is not why take an example when your actual divisor which means your actual factor is not forming any pair which means okay one form a pair with six with this number with this number with this number with this number what about this middle six it is not forming any pair so this can actually be an edge case which you have to handle which means okay you will iterate same exact same thing exact same thing but if we go back and look my d would have actually become a seven because root n is now a six so root n will now be a six now it will become a seven so when you will reduce it now you will start off from the six itself starting so you okay six was counted here also and six will be counted in this loop also so this root n value actual like in like integer root n value which means if your actual number which means root n or like root of this number is actually a integer right then your root n value can can be counted twice so have a quick check if your d equal to root n which means d equal to root n which means your d square is equals to n if this is the case then please continue because this has already been counted in the previous loop right then i can simply do the same thing again exact same thing that okay move back and for every corresponding d your, your answer will be n by d and that's how you can simply solve it in 2 into root, root n time let's see the code it's pretty simple as we saw above also just two cases going forward going back now we initialize our d we'll go on keep root n times okay d into d like usually it's actually good practice rather than writing d is less than or equal to root n write d into d is less than or equal to n that's a better practice so as to not handle the doubles and all that stuff cool now if i go on forward i'll keep on checking if n mod d equal to zero and i'll keep on re reducing my k then i'll simply re return a d if my k becomes zero if not then i'll go on back if i am going on back as i showed you previously also for the ones which are actually way, way i can actually repeat the case this is a condition for that and the same way if i am going back for d i will actually go and find n by d which is this and this will go root n this will go root n thus your total complexity will actually, will actually be 2 into root n more or less root n and that's how space is o of 1 and time is o of root n that's how you can actually solve it in least specific i hope this is well see you in the next video bye bye